And for more on the Dish story, let's bring in the new boss. Joe Clayton joins us now in his first broadcast interview since taking the Dish gig. Joe, welcome to Bloomberg West. Thanks so much for the time. Hi, guys. How are you all today? We're doing well, and, and we should point out, while you're just taking this job now, you have known Charlie Ergen, who Corey was just talking about, for a long time. Didn't you two work together? Didn't he come to you for some help with financing when he was first getting the business started? Well, we first met on the launch of satellite uh, television back uh, back in the mid-90s. And in fact, I was on the other side of the equation, if you will, with DirecTV as we built their hardware and and also did the sales and distribution for the for the product at launch. And Charlie actually was an RCA distributor in those days. And, and then as he uh, rolled out Dish Network, he became a competitor, gave me a lot of headaches. And then as we... <laughs> Roll fast forward, uh, we were partners uh, when I was at Sirius Satellite Radio when we put uh, 70 commercial-free music channels onto the DISH network. So I guess I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, but he's been a great friend for 20 years. You know, Corey was just talking about all the different parts of this business. How are you going to make it all work together? Well, you know, I'm not sure I understand the Seinfeld strategy either, but uh, I do have an analogy. Uh, uh, I do know how to put together a puzzle, and I would say we've probably got all the, the straight edge outside parts put together, and now we're filling in the middle. So uh, we have a, 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 a satellite business, a box business with Echostar, a very successful pay TV business with, uh, uh, with Dish. With Blockbuster, we'll do digital distribution, physical distribution of movies. And you mentioned earlier in the opening, with the uh, DBSD, I, I would be willing to bet that wireless uh, uh, communications and voice is in, our, uh, is in our future. So there are some other additional parts that we need to add in to uh, fulfill our, our puzzle or the, the Seinfeld strategy, if you will. And that will be coming in the, in the coming months and years. Let me back, back up there a little bit. You guys are going to get into the voice business because that's something I haven't read anywhere else. Well, we have bought a, a small company called, uh, uh, called Liberty. It's a SELEC it's a out here in the mountain states. And we're testing some ideas. We will we'll, we'll take broadband, voice, and uh, television, pay-per-view TV, video, uh, to, the to the consumers in the rural areas. So I would say it's something that we're looking at on a small scale now, but who knows where it may take us. Let's talk about that scale. You guys just raised, I think, $2 billion in a debt offering. Um, how much is it going to take to get into that voice business? You know, a CLEC one thing, a competitive local exchange carrier, that's CLEC. I'm, I'm good with, you know, acronyms like that. But what are you going to do and how much is it going to cost? Well, first of all, let's the $2 billion went for Echostar, uh, which is more of our technical uh, uh, sister company, public company, okay. uh, to finance the, the, uh, the purchase of Hughes Network. So that's a separate deal. Um, you have to think that we bought this wireless spectrum uh, for a reason. So you can be best assured we're not going to let it sit on the, uh, uh, on the shelves and collect dust. We will find a way to utilize that either ourselves or with some partner going forward. Joe, everyone's had their eye on AT&T and T-Mobile coming together. And I have to ask, do you think if that deal goes through, there's an opportunity for DISH to team up with DirecTV for you, your two companies to merge? Well, I don't discount any, any possibilities. Uh, uh, I would say it's probably easier from a regulatory environment today than it was, say, uh, you know, five, ten years ago when it was a, a originally proposed. So, you know, we're looking at anything that will help enhance shareholder value. And if, if that's the case, then, of course, we'd look at that. But right now, that's not one of our primary objectives. Well, you're only a couple of days into the job, but have you or Charlie had any discussions with DirecTV, with Mike White over at DirecTV about this possibility? Well, considering I don't really officially start till June 20th, it would be premature for me to answer that. And I, I'm not going to speak for, uh, for Charlie. Uh, but, you know, we talk to our competitor. We watch our competitor all the time. And where there's areas where we can uh, uh, cooperate, we do. But uh, I am not aware of any discussions of that magnitude at this particular point in time. 
Joe, what about Blockbuster? A lot of speculation and questions about what you're going to do with that asset. You've talked about closing. The company has talked about closing um, the majority of the stores, leaving perhaps only the profitable and barely profitable. But the streaming business is of such great interest. You just told us you're going to be working on that streaming with Blockbuster. You've also offered traditional Blockbuster uh, uh, subscriptions, DVD kind of delivery like Netflix to existing or new dish customers. How else are you going to use that asset? Well, we'll also uh, merchandise uh, into their customer base and vice versa with Dish. We've just taken out a, 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 an offer that uh, if you're a new subscriber to Dish Network, uh, we'll give you 90 days free of, uh, of, of, of the block, Blockbuster uh, uh, mail program. So a bunch of movies and as an ex extra incentive to, to buy a Dish, uh, a Dish system. That's just the, 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 the current uh, offering that we're doing. but. I see lots of opportunities uh, with, the, uh, with the Blockbuster facilities. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure that uh, what you said about us closing the majority of the facilities is accurate because uh, Blockbuster gives us uh, penetration in a lot of the metro markets in areas where we are now not as strong as we are in some of the secondary and tertiary markets. So uh, I see a lot of opportunities, whether it's a store in a store um, from a retail perspective, where it's uh, turning in your dish, dish box if you need an exchange, whether it's um, paying if you're a, a, a customer, dropping off your check. So there are a myriad of opportunities, I believe, not only with distribution of, of blockbuster movies, but also the facilities themselves. So you're already bundling the blockbuster mail delivery service as an offering to new dish subscribers. Are you going to start doing the same thing with the Blockbuster streaming service, offering that to Dish subscribers? Remains to be seen, but it's something that we're looking at. Joe, very quickly before we go, uh, you mentioned there was a point when you and Charlie were on different teams, but uh, were you ever surprised at that, thinking back to that point, that you would have been working together at this, at this stage of the game? Well, I joined the Echo Star board about two and a half years ago when I stepped down as chairman of Sirius Satellite Radio. So I, I guess I've been involved over the last two and a half years. If you, if you asked me 15 years ago if I'd be working for Charlie, I would say the chances are pretty slim. But in the last decade, as, as he's built the, heck, I'll call it the Ergot Empire, uh, it was something I was very interested in. And I like, I like being part of uh, landscape changing uh, efforts like satellite television, Sirius uh, satellite radio and for sure Charlie Ergen is changing the landscape of the video business. Yeah, you know, it's, Joe, it's really interesting in terms of content as well. You know, content is suddenly becoming king again. Uh, we earlier this week had the CEO of Miramax, and I want to talk to him when he was at the Cannes Film Festival and just signed a big deal with Netflix. I want to listen to what he had to say. We realize, similar to maybe the lessons of the music industry, that having one just dominant player at the end of the day may not be good for anyone. And so we hope that our, our, our deal in, in some ways will, will kind of send a signal as to other players to come on in and to create a very robust digital market for content. What he's basically saying is he wants someone to pay him for his content again. Are you guys going to be in there doing some content deals with the likes of Miramax? Well, we already are from a, uh, from a pay TV standpoint. So, sure, uh, we want just a little sniff of, uh, of Netflix's business. All right, Joe, thanks again for joining us. Really appreciate the time. Joe Clayton, the Dish CEO, joining us from Englewood, Colorado.